Well, greetings, my friend. Tell me, would you like to buy my boat? What, this? It is... no, it is salami. Well, greetings, friends, and welcome back. I don't know why, it always invokes the image of a Russian trying to sell you his boat. <laughs> I, it just That's obviously just me. So the Fertilance is one of the many ships that is actually vastly improved by playing in VR. And it starts right here in the commander's chair because of this ridiculous piping that happens right above your head. Now in 2D, I always found this extremely obtrusive and in my way, and I always wanted to shove myself right about there, which is, you know, ordinarily where the commander's chair would sit in the middle of the two struts so that you had an actual, well, uninterrupted as much as you can, uninterrupted view of the exterior. But for some reason they decided to have this strut going right over your head. So in 2D, super annoying. In VR, or 3D obviously, it's actually fine because you treat it like you would the A pillar, you know, the pillar in front of you or on the other side in front in your car and you kind of ignore it after a minute because you're looking past it most of the time it kind of becomes part of the decoration. So in actual fact, for a ship that I didn't really like the interior of in 2D, I love it in VR. Saying good morning to Commander Headless, or good afternoon, or whatever it is, we can see that they are mounted on their standard non-movable plinth, and that the interior of the Fertilance is dirty. And that's great, because, you know, as far as the story of the Fertilance and what it's there for, you wouldn't necessarily be running around scrubbing the decks as much as you'd be shooting pirates out of the sky or perhaps being one yourself. That being the case the interior is delightfully lived in so let's have a look at some of the materials that we have here. Obviously all the fronts the same 80 centimeters blah 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 you've heard that before. So over here we have a weird sort of panel which is obviously trying to be leather stitched but I'm not sure how you can leather stitch this plastic inlay or indeed this other plastic inlay but there it is. So at the very least, there's meant to be a leather strip. And over here, there are a series of low-res switches, each of them about the thickness of your thumb. So definitely usable, human interactable. Hooray, winning so far. Down here, the floor is made out of a scuffed, uh, but once polished aluminium, a great looking uh, effect there. Some rubberized kind of plastic, this diamond patterned aluminium again, some different colored inlays. It looks very well lived in. I'll um, get myself right into that footwell in a second, but there's a quick look. Oh, it's actually got a shiny underside. That's interesting. We'll have a look at that in just a second. So moving more towards the front from the commander, you see this large semicircle kind of dash shape, which is quite interesting. It's made out of a textured sort of plasticky material and some bent up brushed aluminium heading up towards the side with some vents in it and a very abrupt stop to that stitching. But what I want to do is get around the front here because this is the view that you don't normally get. So over here, another mix of materials with brushed aluminium and this blue stuff. And actually, they've gone to a fair bit of detail to make this look good, even from this side of things. So, you know, it's a bit of a mis mismatch because sometimes the older gen ships are lower quality in terms of detail. And sometimes they're like this, where it seems like they've gone all out. As we head towards the front of this dash, we can see some exposed piping and things at the front. And that little doohickey at the front there, which is probably the skylight to the outhouse. I mean, really, nothing would help with constipation more than flying through space at a million Gs and doing loop-to-loops and being able to stare up at the ships trying to kill you. I mean, that would help me out, certainly. Moving along, we have the <laughs> exterior sides of these beams which you can see are made out of two mold sort of metal there. And around the edge here, oh, tracking gets lost. Then it starts heading back with a nice sort of rounded shape there to the blue. And that's kind of about it. There aren't any displays in the front, although those panels do look like they could be displays. They aren't used as such at the moment. They're not lit up. Again, one thing I disliked in 2D is the asymmetry of this cockpit. But again, in 3D, even little details like this bit over here, not matching this side over there, I think is fantastic. Over here, it looks like a very long access panel. You can see these two little handles that you could maybe lift that up and open it for some reason. But if we stick our heads through it, there's nothing there. Moving back over here towards the co-pilot side of things, there's again some nice asymmetrical inlays. This little latch here, which is painted sort of like a lime green yellow. 
and a couple of different panels which come into their own, which is really, really nice. A low-res display that just shows, you know, weird Morse code -y kind of green lights. So it's just really start trying to indicate that there's supposed to be something there and maybe some different emitters for the co-pilot's actual heads-up display. And we'll look at that in more detail in just a second. And while we're here, we may as well duck through the dashboard and have a look at this front area. So if we uh, can probably even sit in it, almost. Yeah, there we are. So there's a weird underside, which is like um, a ripple effect glass, which is trying to reflect things. Okay, that's really strange. But yeah, you could lie down in here. It's kind of like a very low, low um, tent. Lots of uh, storage room in here for, you know, your lunch. Moving more towards the front here, we have some more piping and stuff that's exposed. And because it's asymmetrical with the co-pilot pushed back, he's got, or she, has got a little section in here as well, but it's obviously just pushed back a little bit. Let's see if this one's got that weird reflective -y stuff. Nope, just plain black. And speaking of the co-pilot's view, this is the view that you will get normally in uh, multi-crew. You can see that it's actually less of an intrusion from the overhead beams because the co-pilot is kind of mashed over to the side here. But they still have a great view out of this very large window to the left and the large windows around there to the right, as well as obviously this gigantic skylight, which is, um, or starlight? I don't know what you call them on spaceships. But regardless, a great view from here and also looking at the commander there, which actually from this close proximity, but offset, looks really cool. Over here, super low res panel that you cannot make anything out from other than some generic star indicators or something. And down here, just a fairly plain and generic plasticky interior, which really, what more could you expect? I mean, there could be a luggage rack there or something, but that's presumably to be made up with the, the commander as they want. Again, these cool yellow asymmetrical inlays, and really, it's just nicely detailed sort of interior. And here we've got some nice inlaid LEDs uh, in the wall, projecting a nice bit of light onto the material here and reflecting it really nicely. So these lights are always like interior volumetric lights. They give you a really good feeling of presence and these are no exception. And one tiny little detail I forgot to mention is between the two chairs, there is this weird grab handle. I don't know why that's there, but that's definitely a human hand-sized grab handle. Um, what on earth would you do with that? Have, have a crack at it in the comments. And here we find ourselves in a really nice camera angle right underneath the Fertilands itself. And um, apart from these weird floaty uh, skid marks, which I'm not sure how you get on a landing pad, but um, alrighty. But apart from those, it's a very nice looking ship from the underside. I mean, it's a really nice looking ship from most angles. You can see the severe angle of those um, rear thrusters there, good sort of 30 degree angle. And those are about five meters in width, so, or in length or whichever dimension that is on a weird angle. Here you can see the fins and you can see the cargo bay down there, which looks really awesome. And these gigantic pipes feeding heat or coolant or what have you to the many hard points or the engine systems themselves. The landing gear are quite stubby. They're probably only about three meters all the way up into the hull uh, in total length. Yeah, about three meters. Um, but to the bottom of the red hatch there is probably only about two meters, so maybe two and a half. So they're quite stumpy, but quite fat as well. Probably about three meters across, I would guesstimate. But even underneath here, even though you can see some errors and bits of greebling clipping into other bits. It actually looks really nice, nice and industrial, and it looks like it's designed for purpose. Now, as we start exploring the rear section of the Fertilance, the cameras in here are actually relatively generous, allowing us to get a reasonably good view and get close to stuff, which is really nice. So here we are at the back of those volumetric lights. It looks like there should be a kitchen here, and you would then have like a camper van ship. A camper ship? I don't know. Uh, but instead of that, you just have some plain panels they don't even seem to open, so yeah, bit of a missed trick there, but obviously if space legs becomes a thing, then something will happen over here, I'm sure. Bits down the bottom are fairly plain, but again, those volumetric lights over there are making it look really nice. Plain bit of black bent over there on the top, and it really looks like a luxury yacht, which I think is probably the point. Maybe a luxury fighter yacht. And over on the other side, it's pretty safe to say that it's just a carbon copy of the previous side that we have seen. Uh, but again, 
it looks kind of good. And because there are so many different bits and bobs inlaid into it, it gives you a nice feeling of texture and a feeling of space in here. The major contributor to which, of course, is this gigantic overhead skylight. So you, or starlight. So you have one big one over there, which you can obviously see through even from the very rear of the cabin here. And then this massive one overhead, which goes all the way to the back door. Speaking of which, here we are at the door. More volumetric lights, which have even a bit of a smoke effect coming down, which looks really awesome. Similar to the Vulture, I believe it was. Um, and some of the Federal ships, I think as well. Some lights on the sides and again, sort of fairly plain on the outsides. This looks like a missed opportunity for a nice touchpad keypad over here. Um, but again, it's asymmetrical, so there's not another one over here, which creates a great deal of visual interest, which I think is really cool. Inlaid into the floor here, it's quite obvious you have a long strip of brushed aluminium. However, <laughs> um, you can probably see the issue already. That one side seems to be brushed and matted aluminium, and the other side is that weird um, ribbed um, reflecty stuff that we saw over there at the front again don't know if that's on purpose but again asymmetry it looks cool as we approach the rear door here you can see these two pop rivets trying to enter the third dimension from the fifth dimension or something and no clear way to see how the door separates and opens uh it won't split in the middle because there's a whole panel there so i'm guessing the whole thing slides sideways right through we go and here we are in the rear, in inverted commas, of the Fur de Lance. Now you can see we're actually pretty high up here and there's no continuation of the uh, cockpit other than that small panel on the floor. Uh, here you can also see a continuation of that uh, janky going from matte to shiny material there through the door. Okay, I'm a little bit obsessed about that for some reason, I don't know why. So down below we can see the cargo bay, about a story and a half below us and a total of probably a good three, two and a half to three stories down towards the ground from where we are. So quite a substantial height that we find ourselves in here on the deck of the Fur Lance. Because of the very significant slant up from just behind the cargo bay, you can almost see that sort of uh, inverted V-shape coming up just beyond that orange line on the ground. That's where the rear starts to slant up. And because the rest of it is taken up with the engines, I would imagine probably almost all the way up to the landing gear, there's not a huge amount of interior space left to walk around in, in this thing. But there would obviously be a space um, above the cargo bay there, down the sides and below the commander's area below the cockpit. So that's why I think that um, little thing that we saw at the front is probably part of the crew quarters. Maybe not the toilet. And if we jank our head straight through the floor here at the rear of the cockpit, we start to see a few more bits and pieces of the interior. Most of it here is taken up by the hardpoint, which lives directly below the cabin area. And then the other side, you can see the hardpoints coming out sideways and up and down on the exterior of the ship there. So a lot of the interior of this ship, it really is taken up by the weapons, the engines, and then just the cargo bay. So you probably have effectively, I'd say five meters by five meters down the bottom, probably two stories worth of that. Maybe another two meters on either side um, and about five meters long for something else. And bits and bobs just underneath the uh, crew cabin. And you can also see there in the front that little pointy hat thing doesn't actually have an interior. You can see the top of it pointing up there and clearly there's nothing below it. So uh, if there is supposed to be a room under there, it's certainly not rendered at this stage. So as we get out of here, we just watch these landing gear that's a very unique way for them to fold up and actually quite space saving compared to the way that some of the landing gear actually fold up with the other ships. And as we're coming out, it's also worthwhile pointing out some more of these areas of low res textures that we have seen repeated all the way back to the Diamondback Explorer um, in that floating piece just there and on the underside and uh, outside, I suppose, of that winglet. The engines look very cool. I love the fact that those are... Uh, protectors on the sides or whatever they are, those directors actually move uh, in and out even in this space to direct the flow of the engines. Very cool. And out of the station, this uh, interior takes on a life of its own. You know, the darkened areas make the lights more dramatic. You can get more of an idea of the dirt on the floor there. 
reflected from these overheads as well as the blues in the edges. These panels glowing and creating their own light looks really cool. There's these orange lights at the front which looks fantastic. They've really done an excellent job on this ship. I really enjoy it. Now if we walk out from a Commander Headful's side over here straight out the side of the ship itself we can see some of the exteriors, some of the lighting and that little uh, doohickey out there again and we can uh, see what it looks like when we actually pop some of these hard points out. So you can see them sitting over there, sitting quite pretty at the front there, which they look really awesome. And then you can just about see the edges of those beams down there as well. There we go, I forgot to set the fire groups. <laughs> yeah, so in terms of firepower, this thing certainly uh, kicks pretty hard and being so maneuverable, means that it's a pretty good hunting vessel for uh, those of you who've used it, I'm sure you know already. And in my opinion, until the member came along, this was probably the best fighter out there. But that's just me. And back in they go. Now one of the things I really do find frustrating is Frontier not letting us get closer to some of these windows. So you can see that triangular one up the top there that's catching the light of the sun. And there is the other one down there. Uh, that we can't sort of even get very close to. But that one looks nice and dirty. It looks like it's lived in. That's probably crew quarters or something. I really want to get in there and shove my head through. But, you know, even from the other angles we've seen, you can probably guess that there's not actually a huge amount of stuff back there. One thing that looks really cool, of course, is the deploying of that huge hard point down underneath, which just looks, well quite phallic to be honest it makes me think of a dog in springtime well there we are friends your look at the Fertilance, one of the greatest fighters one of the fastest ships the coolest looking ships and one of the best interiors i think in my humble opinion anyway i hope you enjoyed that one and that you join me for the next one until then i'll see you in the black fly safe commanders and i definitely did not just have my ship slam into the side of the space station while i was talking to you definitely not